In this series, we go through all of the solar charms in the Exalted 3rd Edition core book. We review them and we revise those we feel are necessary to revise. If you have seen the previous videos in this series, then you know what to expect. But if this is your first time watching, then remember that these are my personal opinions. And um, the reason I want to make this kind of video is because I feel that charm design philosophy itself has uh, evolved over the lifespan of the third edition. Both because the development team has changed, but also because um, the writers have um, gotten more familiar writing charms, I suppose, and become better at it. And uh, there have also been uh, so much more playtesting than when the, the third edition core book was written. Most of the charms I have issues with in the core book are those who are too situational to be useful. In other words, they are too na narrow to be broadly applicable. I, I think a good charm should be broadly applicable, but they could, but it could have a narrow expertise or a narrow, narrow focus. A charm could be better in a specific situation, but uh, it shouldn't be so situational that it na rarely ever comes up in play. And um, I do think that most of the charms that have been written since the core book have been much be better in that regard. But um, there are also some charms, I feel, that are written without an understanding of the kind of context the charm is actually used. Uh, we saw that in the previous video in the craft charms, for example, where there's a charm that gives you a full free craft excellency, which you will use in a situation when modes aren't really necessary. And uh, that makes the charm itself kind of superfluous or unnecessary. There are a few of those charms scattered around the core book. And uh, in this vi video series, I try to highlight certain charms that I have issue issues with. And if they're able to be changed, I suggest certain changes, certain optional changes. If you want to just see the changes themselves without hearing me talk about them, then you can check the Google document in the description below. There are also timestamps for each individual charm that we're going to address today in um, a pinned comment below. So if you don't have time to watch the full video in one sitting, then you can come back and check the timestamps for where we left off. Or maybe you want to skip some charms or there's a certain charm that you're interested in, then um, you can find the timestamps down there. So what are my expectations for dodge? I haven't really used these charms for quite a while now. Um, since Dragon Blood came out, we started playing that and um, my group are going to start playing Lunars now. So there was some time ago we last played Solar, so there have been some time since last war since I last looked at these charms as well. But from what I recall, Dodge is um, well written, I believe. Most of the Dodge charms are applicable and uh, useful. So I don't really think we want to do many revisions in this video, but perhaps we can do some reviewing and uh, maybe take a look at why some of these charms are good and who knows perhaps we'll find some charms that are less good that we can do something about but um, i'm not going to ramble too much so um, i think it's time to launch the intro and then jump straight into the charms themselves First charm, read in the wind. Two initiative per one evasion, reflexive perilous. The exalt draws upon her own momentum to bend and flow with opposing forces. For every two initiatives spent in response to an attack, the player may raise the exalt's evasion by one. Read in the wind raises the cap on how much the solar can enhance her evasion by her essence. 
At dodge 5, essence 3 plus, a successful dodge with read in the wind restores one moat. This bonus may only occur once per round. I mean, this is a, um, a basic charm. It's rarely the first dodge charms I get, if I recall correctly. But um, if you have high initiative, which a dodge character should have, then um, it can be very useful. The detail here, Read in the Wind raises the cap on how much the solar can enhance evasion by her essence is very important because this means that yes, the charm cap itself is what's being increased. So if you have dex 5, dodge 5, then you can increase your evasion by 5 for 10 modes. And um, if you have Essence 5 on top of that, this charm allows you to pay 10 initiatives initiative on top of that to increase your evasion by another 5. In other words, increase your evasion by 10 total. So that's powerful. Um, that part of the charm, I think, is very okay. Um, the automatic upgrade... I mean, I guess it's fine. I, I'm... It's a bit of a minor upgrade, I would say, this part. Dodge 5 Essence 3. So you restore one moat for a successful dodge and you can only do it once per round. I would probably buff this, actually. Um, yeah. I think I would remove the cap, one per round cap. Remove the one once per round cap from automatic upgrade. I think so, yes. Because you still need to use the charm in order to acquire the modes. I don't really think there's a need to add that restriction. To be honest, so, but the charm itself overall is quite good. So, dust modes whirling. The solar is as elusive as a dust moat whirling through a ray of light. This charm supplements a disengage attempt, granting double nines. I mean, double nines is always good. So this charm makes you very competent and disengaging. I think my only criticism is that it's kind of boring. I would have liked to see some kind of secondary effect as well. Even if it is expen more expensive, I think. Just because, you know, to make it a little bit more interesting. Question is what that could be. It could probably be smart to keep it like this for now and uh, see if there are any upcoming charms that maybe could be merged with it somehow. Because um, it doesn't really need to be improved, I'd say, but it needs to be made more interesting. This is the kind of charm that... Uh, I mean, you need to build, build your character around this engaged to be interested in this kind of charm. So it's... Uh, it's good for a ranged character, I'd say, but um, it could be that just just the boost to disengage could be a bit narrow as well. I'm not really sure about that, but let's keep it like this for now and uh, we might come back to it later. Shadow Dancer Method. One moat permanent. The Lawgiver dances in and out of the whirling blades of enemies like one consigned to death. For one moat she retains the two initiative that are lost with each disengage attempt. In addition, upon using a disengage action to move away on her opponent's turn, if she then chooses to move to close range of her opponent as her next movement, she gains two initiative automatically. 
regardless of whether she spent a moat on this shot. I think this can actually be merged with dust mode swirling. So let's jump back a little bit here and uh, cost three modes. I think this might be fine actually. So this is my suggestion. Um, dust mode swirling is uh, a little bit more interesting. I did increase the cost to three modes in order to add on this secondary effect. Um, I thought about adding the secondary effect from Shadow Dancer method as well, but I'm not really sure if it's attractive enough. It feels kind of uh, meh. So I don't think that effect is a deal breaker, so I do think we can remove it. So let's jump on to reflex sidestep technique. <clears throat> Five modes reflexive uniform instant. The Sola's pretty natural awareness of her surroundings makes her nearly impossible to harm. Even when struck unaware, she may part herself from a foe's attack, undoing the damage that was done to her. This charm may be activated in response to an ambush attack, a trap, or other damaging effect the Sola is completely unaware of, setting her evasion to two against the attack and adding an additional point of evasion for every one or two in the attack before charms such as excellent strike. If the solar's evasion recovers to its full value, she may apply additional dodge charms if necessary. Um, I think the base effect is very good because um, it gives you the option of facing the attack with quite a lot of evasion. But I think being able to add extra dodge charms should be the default. And uh, I'm not really sure if the cost is too high or too low. If it's not too low, it might be too high. I think uh, let's keep the cost, but... Um, I think this buff is good. Leaping dodge method. Cost one mode two initiative. The exalt feels the coursing essence of creation moving through her. With a thought she grasps the flow and is carried away. Upon a successful dodge the solar may invoke this charm. Burning her momentum to create a sudden burst of movement, she may leap backward, forward, up or down, if applicable a single range band. <clears throat> um, this is a good charm, and uh, because it gives you an actual movement outside of your turn. I have seen this charm being used erroneously before, because... Um, this charm does not give you an automatic disengage, for example. I've seen some players and storytellers think that it does. If you're attacked in close combat and you use this charm, you have the option of gaining some additional distance, but you need to succeed on a disengage roll as well, or they can trap you there with them. It doesn't automatically allow you to break space, so to say. Let's keep it. <clears throat> if 
permanent. The solar skill at evasion is such that her dodges wither away at her opponent's momentum. When she is successful dodges an attack, her opponent loses one point of initiative in addition to any other initiative he may have lost for failing the attack. I think this is this is a bit borderline. It is um, it is a nice effect to have because initiative is important. It's a bit borderline uh, if it's worth the charm purchase because most of the time it's quite minor, I would say, but. This is the kind of charm that could be very minor and insignificant, but it can also be a deal breaker depending on the situation. And because of that, I think it's, um, I think it's okay. I think I want to keep it like this. Drifting leaf illusion. One moat, reflexive. Exult slips away from an attack that would have struck her. When using this charm, Solar successfully evades an attack roll bearing successes equal to evasion. This charm may be invoked after the attack roll is made. Yes, this is one of my... <laughs> this is one of my go-to dodge charms. I always get this one. I do think it's a bit underwhelming, but I still, I still get it every time. The interesting thing about this charm is that you can use it after the attack have been made, after the attack has been made, and uh, you know the outcome of the result. So you don't need to waste this charm without knowing what the attack roll will reveal. But it's still only useful when the attack roll result is equal to your evasion because you are, it only increases it by one so it's kind of situational because of that I do think I would prefer if this charm had a secondary effect as well maybe or if it had a chance of increasing evasion further maybe it's a bit difficult to determine, actually. Do I want to buff it? Do I want to remove it? It's not a question. Because um, even though it's an effect that can be useful sometimes, is it useful enough to keep? I think it, actually, I think it can be quite superfluous. I mean, I do, I do like having this charm. I think I, went with it in my solar character creation video but i mean what do we lose if we remove it we'll yeah yeah let's remove it we'll remove this charm let's remove it shadow over water two modes like a shadow on water right we need to change the Prerequisite charms to none. Like a shadow on water, the solar's press and haunts her enemies with dreams of the untouchable. For an instant, this charm removes any penalties to the exultivation. Sure. We can keep this. Are you okay? Fleet dreaming image. Five modes. The solar moves ahead of her enemies and tempts them with the illusion of her presence. This charm allows the lawgiver to attempt a disengage action from short range on her turn. Trying to think about why you would want to do that. And if you attempt a disengage action from short range, is it still being contested? I don't think it would be contested unless they can attack out of short range. As as the disengage is active, you still, you're still being allowed your movement when your opponents move towards you, I suppose, to retain the distance, which is very good. But I think the charm needs to clarify actually how it works when you're from short when you're at short range, because I don't think you, I don't think your disengage is contested. I think you make a disengage action and it's automatically successful at least that's my interpretation and comment below if you 
think I'm wrong. I think that's the kind of clarification you need. And I think it's too expensive. Let's go with this. And hopefully you can correct me if I'm misinterpreting it. Three modes, drifting shadow focus. Three modes, one willpower. Like a shadow moving in the darkness, Lawgiver drifts through the ranks of her enemies, sowing terror and confusion. This charm is declared before an attack and lasts until the Exult's next turn. Upon a successful dodge, it allows the Solar to redirect an attack made against her to any other target within close range. Declared before an attack and lasts until Exult's next turn. Hmm. Now this is nice. That's a good charm. Force stealing faint. Uh, permanent. This charm permanently upgrades its prerequisite. The one point of initiative lost by the opponent is gained by the solar. Oh wait, wasn't that? Sierra and Quicksilver. Her opponent loot. Ah. I think that should be automatically. Uh, for stealing faint. There we go. Seven shadow evasion. Four modes, one willpower reflexive. The solar's perfect form is quicker than an eye blink and more tactile, more tractile than water. Once per scene, the solar may invoke this charm to dodge any attack from any source without a contest. The solar's anticipation of harm is so perfect that she can even evade recurring uncountable damage with a single use. As a cyclone tears apart a mountain, the exalt steps through the vortex unharmed. As the pole of earth spills down atop her, she escapes into the seeps and fissures of the world, moving like a fleeing shadow. This charm may be reset by using Reed and Wind to, to dodge three decisive attacks from dangerous opponents. How do you know if an opponent is dangerous? <laughs> Once per scene. Um, don't think you need to limit yourself to read in the wind. The charm itself is good, I think. Um, it's a cool idea to be able to dodge uncountable damage like that. It's fine, it's fine. Seven Shadow Evasion is also fine. Safety between heartbeats. Five modes. In making herself untouchable, Lawgiver exploits the slightest hesitation, even the pause of her breath, maximizing her opponent's failure. The Exalt may use this charm upon successfully dodging an attack, causing her opponent to lose one initiative for each one in the attack result. As I've said before, I mean... The charm effect isn't inherently bad, it's just boring. And I do think that these kinds of charms should have a secondary effect just to make them a little bit more interesting. So I wonder if this is something that can be combined with something else, maybe. It's a lot of initiative though. You can wait until after the attack to... Yeah, I think it's good enough now when I think about it. 
it's good enough fourfold shiver binding the solar enacts a skill which doubles and trebles her bold in a shimmering blur placing it together outside an attack upon successfully applying a ovation the solar may activate fourfold shiver binding to raise her ovation score by one for the rest of the scene this bonus is not stackable and does not count as dice added by a charm nice Incompatible with armor, that's unnecessary. I think um, let's change the prerequisite. It should still have a prerequisite, but I think it, since I removed Drifting Leaf Illusion, we can change it to Shadow Over Water. Um, keep the charm as is, but make it applicable with armor, I'd say. I mean, I understand the idea of not making certain dodge charms applicable with armor, just to make dodge a valuable substitute to a high armor character. But I wonder if this charm should be it. I mean, we do have martial arts to distinguish. And... Uh, mm. I don't think it's necessary to make it inapplicable with armor, but um, as I said, these are my personal opinions and you may disagree. I think the overall effect itself, I mean, you get plus one non-charm evasion, which is good. Mm, let's go with this. Flow like blood. 5 modes, 1 willpower, perilous, 1 scene, shadow over water. The Excel permeates her being with essence, becoming partly atomized. For the rest of the scene, when dodging attacks by opponents with lower initiative than her own, the lawgiver ignores all penalties to evasion. Attacks which miss her often seem to pass harmlessly through her dreamlike form. While this charm is active, read in the wind costs only one initiative per evasion, and each round that solar remains within close range of an enemy without being struck by an attack, either due to evasion or due to not being attacked, she gains a point of initiative. I think this is a solid charm. Let's keep it. Rumor of form. Three modes per minus one. The exalt moves her physical essence around the flow of an attack, partially discorporating. For each one that appears in the result of an attack roll, the exalt may pay three motes, converting that one into a minus one success. Now this is not something I'm too much of a fan of. We do have a bunch of dodge charms that already synergize with opponent ones. So do we need another one? Uh, and do we need one that can disturb the other charms? Because I do believe that this detail, converting that one into minus one success. Does that mean that the one disappears? And uh, if so, then does it make certain other charms inapplicable? Uh, rumor foremost acts as a stealth attempt. As the solar passes around the strike, she also vanishes in its way wake. For every success the Excel steals from her opponent's attack, she gains an automatic success on a reflexive dexterity to stealth action. Now, this is kind of cool. I think uh, I want to rephrase it. Uh, the exalt may pay ah. Let's go with two modes instead. Uh, two modes, two modes in order to remove one success from the opponent's attack roll up to a no number of removed successes equal to the number of ones rolled. Um, I think that this phrasing helps to clarify that uh, 
the ones aren't removed and uh, may still synergize with other charms. I think this is fine. The, uh, the reason I want to reduce the cost to two modes is because uh, I still want it to be better than an excellency and uh, an excellence is worth two modes per success. This basically gives you two modes per success to a stealth roll and these are charm successes. So yeah, I think um, I think this is fine. This is fine. Let's go with this. Let's go with this. Way of Whispers technique. Permanent. The Exalt's burgeoning mastery of dodge releases two of her charms from the burden of consideration. Upon learning this charm, using Drifting Leaf Illusion, a rumor form no longer count as the use of a charm in conjunction with certain other dodge charms such as Unbowed, Unbowed Willow Meditation. Right, because this has a without using a charm effect that I'm still going to remove in a w little bit, so let's remove this charm as well. I don't, um, I don't like the kind of effects that um, restricts you. You know, an effect that says you, you have all of these powers, but in order to use this power, you're not allowed to use those powers. I don't like that. I think that all of your dodge charms should motivate you to use your dodge charms. So uh, let's remove the, this. Um, that. Poros Division. Four modes per damage removed. Some even claim to have struck a solar. This charm allows the Exalt to remove damage from a decisive attack after damage has been rolled at the cost of four modes per cancelled success. A blow cancelled by this charm appears at first to strike the solar before missing entirely, unless using an attack with special initiative reset rules. An attack negated by this defense will return the attacker to base initiative. Mm. Um, four modes per cancel success. There's no limit to how many damage can be removed, it appears. So I think four modes may be fine. Yeah, I think this is a good charm. Uh, I was considering if three modes would make more sense, but I think that could be a bit too powerful. Just because there's no cap because you actually remove an already inflicted damage four modes discourages you from removing too much and uh, it's still costly enough to not uh, make damaging attacks kind of useless against you so i think this is fine sunlight bleeding away four modes one willpower the solar melts across the landscape in a fluidity of motion this charm can be activated upon succeeding at a disengage action, allowing the solar to reflexively retreat in the face of enemy movement twice rather than once. Thus, if the solar disengaged successfully, she would move back the first and the second time an opponent approached on this turn. If the solar disengaged successfully, she would move back the first and the second time. Right, if there are more than one. Yeah. I thought it meant first that... If a if the same opponent moved towards you twice, which they which they cannot do, so I found it weird. But if um, different opponents move towards you, you can. Move. Yeah, I mean it um, relies on you actually disengaging several opponents. I wonder if it should have something to boost your disengage even against a single opponent. I mean, it's a powerful effect to be able to distance yourself an, an extra time. It's a, that's a very powerful effect. But it relies on you being chased by at least two opponents, which I think is limiting. What if the charm allowed you to move two range bands either way? Would that be too... I mean, why would that be too powerful? I don't think it would. I think it would pretty much give the same result, but with a broader application, because you can use it against a single opponent. 
you will become extremely good at getting away. But it still costs 4 modes 1 willpower, so I think it could be worth it. Yes. Yes, let's go with that. Thousand steps stillness. Five modes. Drawing in all possible avenues of motion, the soulless perfect stillness is broken by a ribbon of anima that courses through her body, causing her to flicker and treble like a heat haze. When Exel successfully dodges, she may use the charm to gain initiative equal to the ones and twos in the attack roll. Still another powerful charm. And a charm that relies on ones, so... Always something. And you can get a lot of initiative as a dodge solar. I think it's a good charm. Unbowed Willow Meditation. Uh, and Exel successfully dodges a decisive attack without using a charm. She steals all of the attacker's initiative and crashes him. This charm does not work against gambits. Remove this charm. Like I said before, I don't like a charm that relies on you to not use your charms. 100 shadow ways. 6 mode stackable, one scene. After successfully dodging an attack, the exalt may activate this charm to remember a single charm used in the attack. She feels its spiritual form and pressure as a physical thing and understands how to dodge it. For the remainder of the scene, she perfectly evades the effects of that charm. 100 Shadow Ways cannot be used against the Excellency Charm of any ability, nor can it be used against Sorcerer or Evocations. Furthermore, if the Exalt falls into Initiative Crash, this charm ends. I think that's kind of cool, but um, she perfectly evades the effects of that charm. I think this charm can be used against Evocations, I think. I think Sorcerer as well, as well, actually. Or maybe not. Maybe not Sorcery. I mean, it shouldn't be able to completely ignore Wood Dragon Cloth, for example. Or Blood Lash. It should... Um, I think Evocations are fine. Yeah. Yeah, so let's go with this. Living Bonds Unburdened. Three modes, three initiative, plus one modes, one initiative per health level. Simple, one C. The Solar casts away her physical bonds and revels in dreams of dissolution and the whirling freedom of flight. When using the Sean Logger against the Chandler Anima into her flesh, she must remain immobile until the next turn. During this time, Revation becomes Inapplicable and her parry suffers a minus one penalty. On her next turn roll wits plus dodge dies to create a number of temporary minus zero health levels equal to the roll successes paying one mote and one initiative per health level. This roll cannot be enhanced by dodge charms and any health levels the solar is unwilling or unable to buy or discard them. While using this charm, Solar suffers damage solely to any over minus zero health levels or is considered to have successfully dodged the attack even though the health levels are still checked off. A dodge created solely by living bonds on burden does not count as the use of a charm. This charm's effect does not stack and may not be replenished until all of the created health levels have been damaged. Okay, so for one turn, until her next turn, her evasion is inapplicable and Perry suffers minus one penalty. Is that necessary or can we jump straight to this? On her next turn.
But then again, why is the dice roll relevant when you still have to pay for each individual success? Why not simply decide how many how much you want to spend? Much would this cost? Eight, eight votes, eight initiative, eleven, eleven. Maybe it should be limited to. Should we go with this? Is it too powerful? I think it may still. It may be a bit powerful. Let's increase the cost. There we go. There we go. I'm happy with this. Unbridled shade attitude. Like cloud shadows driven by the sun, the solar passes over all obstacles unchanged in their course. The solar gains one point of initiative for every minus zero health level damage by a decisive attack. We can keep this. Because it synergizes as well with the prerequisite charm. Harm dismissing meditation. Once per scene, the lawgiver may deny the very wounds that assail her, striking them from her body's record. This charm allows the soul to retroactively dodge damage she has already received. Standing still and silent, the Exile focuses on her wounds for a single round in which she does not attack and does not apply her parry or evasion. Applying such defenses cancels the charm. At the end of the round, roll her dexterity plus dodge unmodified by charms and convert the successes into healed minus one and minus two health levels. The solar steps outside of the moment when she was hurt, casting aside her wounded form and denying its existence. This is kind of neat. I think this is cool. This is cool. Let's keep it. Refinement of flowing shadows. Oh, already at the last charm. This went by quickly. But there aren't too many dodge charms. And like I said, most of them are actually fine. Um, the exalt becomes one with the nothingness and is reborn. Upon using seven shadow evasion to dodge an attack, the soul gains a point of bonus initiative, as well as one extra point of initiative on her turn each round until she is struck by a withering decisive attack. This bonus is cancelled if the solar enters concealment. Or is that long or extreme long range from closest foe? This is, um, like I said, you get one hell of a lot of initiative. But it's kind of cool. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Now, wasn't this a short video? Let's jump back a bit. So, a lot of buffs, I feel. We remove the once per round cap from Read in the Wind. We merged Shadow Dancer and Dust Moat Swirling. We buffed Reflex Sidestep Technique. Um, we merged Steer and Quick Silver Flight and Force Stealing Faint. Yeah, overall, we did a lot of buffs, I feel like. Maybe two mana buffs, I don't know. Maybe dodge solars are a bit too powerful now. Mm. I kind of like these buffs though. I think they are fine. And as I said, the solar dodge tree is mostly fine. I do think that the changes I suggested are improvements. If you have any comments or suggestions or criticism, 
you know where to find the comment section. And I do read every comment and I try to highlight the criticism to make them a bit more, to make them pop a bit. So don't, um, don't hesitate to be critical of my decisions because I by no means think that my suggestions here are better than other suggestions and I do welcome other suggestions to give uh, viewers a broader perspective of how to approach these shops so do comment below with your own suggestions for changes and um, all of my changes here will be added to the Google document which you can find in the description below and uh, you also have the previous charm categories in the same document so you can find everything there next up is integrity and uh, i have to say that i don't really have any preconceived notions about integrity because if i recall correctly i have barely looked at that tree even before i don't really think i've done or story told for an integrity solar before and i haven't really gone back to those charms since I first read the book for the first time I think so I do remember the bridge keyword and I do remember that there's um, quite a few integrity charms that build off different ability trees so this the, that could be interesting it could be um, It could be something I enjoy, it could be something I'm critical of. Right now I'm not actually sure. I need to sit down and actually take a look before I can make any conclusions there. But that's that's the topic for next video, I suppose. As for other videos in general, I'm working on um, a few different videos, but I've been quite unproductive on them. I've been writing a lot on Machineborn. But um, I do intend to get some more videos out before the end of this month. I've been working on a story path video, basic story path video, system video. I've been working on, um, well I haven't really started but I have um, kind of started on the Gambit video. I've been working quite a lot on a vampire lore video and um, Also have been um, looking a bit at a player's guide video, general how to be a good role player video. Uh, that one isn't uh, prioritized very highly at the moment. I do think I want to get the system videos out first, but we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Um, anyway, this was the dodge video. Next up is the integrity video. If you like what I'm doing and want to see more, you know the drill. Comment, like the video, share the video, subscribe to my channel. And um, hopefully you're already subscribed. I think that if you have watched through all of this video, even though it's not as long as some of the previous ones in the series, you... Pro you're probably a subscriber, but if you're not, click that button. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now and um, cut, 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 cut. See you next time.